Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. Additionally, Flipside Gaming is going to be giving away a box of Battle Bond to celebrate my 20,000 subscribers. For entry, all you have to do is use the promo code MTGMUDSTA on any order over $10 and you'll be entered to win. You can do multiple entries for each time you use the promo code. The time frame for this giveaway is between June 1st and June 30th with the drawing happening in July. Please excuse my congestion as I'm fighting off a cold and I've been up most of the night trying to figure out what the heck a Fios battery backup unit is. This week, Sean is playing Halar and keeps him with Command Tower, Forest, Hardened Scales, Stomping Ground, Ancient Animus, Cinderglade, and Elemental Bond. Mike is playing Tashiro and keeps him with Myriad Landscape, Two Swamps, Demon of Dark Schemes, Blood Artist, Nevernyal's Disc, and Cremate. Trevor is playing Rune and keeps Mystical Tutor, Consecrated Sphinx, Yavamaya Hollow, Prairie Stream, Farhaven Elf, and Scattered Grove. Matt has rebuilt his Bosch deck and is keeping a hand with Sanctum of Ugin, Mountain, Unwinding Clock, Rings of Bright Hearth, Mindstone, and Mere Battlesphere. Matt wins the die roll and starts us off. Matt plays a Mountain and passes to Trevor. Trevor plays a tapped Prairie Stream and passes. Sean plays a Command Tower and casts Hardened Scales. Mike plays a tapped Myriad Landscape and passes to Matt. Matt drops another Mountain, casting a Mindstone before passing to Trevor. Trevor drops his Scattered Grove, which always comes into play tapped, and he passes, and he passes, and he passes, and he passes. Why won't Sean start his turn? Sean plays a Forest and casts Durable Handicraft, which seems pretty spicy in this deck. Mike plays a Swamp and casts a turn 2 Blood Artist. At the end of Mike's turn, Trevor casts Mystical Tutor to go and find Cultivate. Matt plays a Mountain and casts an Winding Clock. Trevor draws his Cultivate for turn and plays a Yavamaya Hollow before casting the Cultivate. Sean plays a Stomping Ground, taking two to have it come in untapped. He then casts an Elemental Bond and passes. Mike plays a Swamp and passes. Matt plays a Sanctum of Ugin for his land and brings out Slowbad. Trevor casts a Farhaven Elf in his main phase, but shortcuts and plays a Temple of Plenty before searching his library and then scrying. Sean plays a Mountain and casts Halar. Sean pays one to put a plus one plus one counter on them, but this is doubled thanks to Hardened Scales. Sean also gets to draw a card from the Elemental Bond. At the end of Sean's turn though, Mike cracks a myriad landscape to find two swamps. Mike plays a swamp and pays five to cast a blood gift demon. Matt draws for his turn and passes. Trevor plays an island and casts Consecrated Sphinx. He only has to pass once this time to Sean. Sean draws for his turn and Trevor draws two. Sean drops a cinder glade in his main phase, which comes in untapped, and casts with a kicker unstable footing, which gives Halar another plus one plus one counter, which is doubled from the hardened scales. Halar then deals 4 damage to each of Sean's opponents, and Sean has Unstable Footing deal 5 to Trevor. Mike puts his Bloodgift Demon's trigger on the stack during his upkeep, and responds to it by casting Cast Down on Trevor's Consecrated Sphinx. The Sphinx dies, and Mike then loses 1 to draw a card from the Demon Trigger, and draws for turn. He drains Sean for 1 with the Blood Artist Trigger, and passes to Matt. Matt plays a Buried Ruin for his turn, and pays 6 to cast a Combustible Gear Hulk. He targets Sean, who lets Matt draw 3 cards. Matt then passes and untaps his Mind Stone on Trevor's untap step. Trevor drops an Angel of Finality in his main phase to exile Mike's graveyard. He then plays an Island and casts a Kur Tribe Elder, passing to Sean. Sean drops an Orin Reef, which comes into play tapped, and casts an Everflowing Chalice, multi-kick twice. This gives Halar another counter, which is doubled, and Halar deals 6 damage to everyone. Sean then casts an Elfheim Druid, but while the Druid is on the stack, Mike casts Tribute to Hunger. Sean has to sacrifice Halar, and Mike gains 9 life. Mike loses one life and draws on the Bloodgift Demon Trigger. He then draws for turn and plays a Swamp, which doesn't match, and passes. Matt plays another one of his beautiful uniformed mountains and brings out a mere Battlesphere. He gets four tokens and swings the Combustible at Sean for six. He then passes to Trevor and untaps his artifacts on Trevor's untapped step. Trevor casts one of Ruin's best friends, Avenger of Zendikar in his main phase, gaining eight plant tokens. He then plays a Flooded Strand, putting the plants through one of his vigorous workout routines to beef them up to 1-2s. Trevor then swings the Farhaven Elf and Sakur Tribe Elder at Sean, and Sean blocks the Farhaven Elf, taking 1. Sean recasts Halar and pays 1 for the Durable Handicraft trigger to put a counter on Halar, doubling it with the Hardened Scales. He then taps the Orin Reef, putting 2 more counters on Halar, and casts a Kicked Primal Growth. This gives Halar another 2 counters and deals 6 to Sean's opponents. Sean then grabs 2 basics and passes to Mike. 
Mike loses another life, drawn from his blood gift demon, and brings out Toshiro Umezawa. He passes to Matt. Matt plays a Shrine of the Forsaken Gods as his land for turn, and brings out a car and silver golem. Matt then moves to combat, and swings the Battle Seer at Sean. Responding to the Battle Sphere trigger, Sean casts Ancient Animus to have his Halar fight the Battle Sphere. Halar gets another counter, as they are a legendary creature, and this is doubled because of the hardened scales. I'm so tired of saying this. Matt sacrifices a mirror though to slow bad to make his Battle Sphere indestructible, and taps the three remaining mirrors to deal three damage to Sean and pump his Battle Sphere by plus three plus zero. Matt then passes to Trevor, who at the end of turn, sacrifices his Sakur Tribe Elder to find a basic forest, pumping his plants with another plus one plus one counter. Trevor casts a Gilded Drake in his main phase and steals Sean's Halar. He then swings all of his plants at Sean, who puts the Gilded Drake in front of one of them. Before damage is done though, Trevor sacrifices his Flooded Strand to go and find a tap breeding pool, taking one and pumping his plants again with another plus one plus one counter. This is enough to kill Sean, and Trevor casts Rune in his second main phase, shuffling his library as he hadn't had a chance yet after killing Sean. Mike loses one to draw a card from the Blood Gift Demon, and plays a Swamp. Mike then drops a Mimic Fat, and passes turn. Matt plays a Mountain, and brings out Bosch. Matt then looks at the power on Trevor's board, and decides to pass rather than potentially incur the Wrath of Broccoli. Trevor rearranges his mana, and evokes the Muldrifter. He draws two, and then the Muldrifter dies. Trevor then drops a forest, pumping his plants by another plus one plus one counter, and then casts a Karmic Guide. He targets a Consecrated Sphinx, but Mike is quick to stop this with a Cremate. Sadly, Cremate is also stopped by Trevor's Swan Song, and the Sphinx return while Mike gains a Bird Token. Trevor then swings all of his tokens at Mike, but Mike makes things difficult for Trevor with a Vona's Hunger, having Sidney's Blessing. Trevor sacrifices six tokens and a Farhaven Elf, while Matt lets his Mere Battlesphere die along with the Mere Tokens. Mike puts all the Blood Artist triggers on Trevor, draining him for 11, and takes the Mere Battlesphere for his own with a Mimic Vat trigger. Mike then gets hit by two plant tokens, and Trevor passes. Mike uses the Blood Gift Demon on himself once more. Mike casts a Malicious Affliction to kill the Consecrated Sphinx. Trevor regenerates the Sphinx with Yavimaya Hollow, and Mike draws for turn, while Trevor draws another two. Mike then plays a Swamp, and brings out a copy of the Mere Battlesphere with his Mimic Vat. To the surprise of hopefully no one, Mike swings the Battlesphere at Trevor. He taps the four tokens and deals four damage to Trevor with the Battlesphere on an attack trigger. This also pumps the Battlesphere by plus four plus zero. Trevor blocks with an Angel of Finality and takes one from the Blood Artist trigger. Because a creature died, Mike is then able to cast Bonus Hunger from his graveyard. Bonus Hunger once again forces his opponents to sacrifice half of their creatures, and Mike is able to then put enough triggers to finish off Trevor from his Blood Artist and puts the remaining two on Matt. With nothing else, Mike passes turn and exiles the Mere Battlesphere. Matt drops a mountain for his land for turn, and casts Rings of Bright Hearth. He then activates Bosch's ability, copying the ability with the rings, and flinging Bosch at the Blood Artist while the other trigger goes at Mike. Mike does get to drain Matt for two from both Bosch and the Blood Artist Giant, and Matt then passes turn. Mike loses one in his upkeep to draw an extra card from the Blood Gift Demon, and draws for turn. He plays a Thespian Sage for his land for turn, and brings out the Battle Sphere again, making another four mere tokens. Mike then moves to combat, and swings the Battle Sphere at Matt, and taps 8 mirrors to deal 8 damage to Matt, and pump the Battle Sphere by plus 8 plus 0. Matt blocks with Slowbad, and Matt sacrifices the artifact on his board before Slowbad dies, while Mike shortcuts and casts a Solemn in his second main phase to find a Swamp. At the end of turn, Matt sacrifices his Mind Stone to draw a card. Matt casts his wonderfully telegraphed Scrap Mastery, bringing back all of his artifacts, while Mike brings back none, and has to sacrifice all the ones he has on board. Matt puts the Combustible Gear Hulk trigger on his only target, Mike, and Mike doesn't want to tempt fate, so he lets Matt draw three. Matt then plays a Mountain, and brings out a Blink Moth Urn, passing turn. At the end of turn, Mike casts a Hideous End, targeting Bosch, destroying it, and dealing two to Matt. Mike loses one in his upkeep to draw with the Blood Gift Demon trigger, and draws her turn. He plays a Swamp, and casts a Cage Sun, naming Black. Mike then brings out Erebos to stop any life gain Matt might be running, and smashes into Matt for 6 with his Blood Gift Demon. Matt untaps for his turn, and gains 6 colorless mana in his main phase from the urn. Using the floating mana, and tapping a land, Matt is able to cast all his dust. With the Sorcerer on the stack though, Mike casts Hero's Demise to kill Karn, and then with the Shiro triggering because of Karn dying, Mike casts Hideous End from his graveyard again to destroy the Combustible Gear Hulk and deal 2 to Matt. Matt then brings out an Etched Champion, and a Dreamstone Hedron. 
He's not done though, and casts Kirkesh Onaki Ancient and a Wayfarer's Bobble before passing to Mike. Mike draws for turn, and is only to tap two Swamps and a Thespian Stage to cast a Wretched Confluence. He chooses to have Matt draw a card and lose two life twice, and targets himself with the same ability once. This kills Matt, and Mike wins the game. Game review time. So, I think it was pretty clear from early on that Sean was the main threat of the game. He was doing upwards of 5 damage per opponent almost every turn that Halar was out, and it was only to get worse with the more kicker spells he resolved. Having the hardened scales on turn 1 certainly allowed Halar to get out of control very quickly. I think Trevor reacted quite well, focusing on Sean and taking him out of the game, but the problem was that he pretty much was the only one dealing with Sean, and as a result, Mike and Matt were able to basically keep their answers for themselves. Bona's hunger from Mike certainly proved to be Trevor's antithesis, and he basically lost because of it and the blood artist that sat on the field for the entire game almost. It certainly didn't help that he was able to gain a lot of incremental life out of it, and in turn use that life to basically get some extra draws thanks to the blood gift demon. Matt's Bosch deck certainly suffered from drawing a lot of lands, and not very many card draw spells or relevant artifacts. Matt certainly drew a couple good artifacts, but unfortunately he had to focus on Mike, who had a lot of life, and Bosch's damage just wasn't able to get there quick enough. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.